Hey everyone, welcome to Mission Impact with me, Tracy P. Allen. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how to start a social enterprise. So if you've never heard about a social enterprise before, or you've heard about it and not exactly sure what it is or how to start one, you're in the right place. Um, I am the owner of TVA Consulting Group, uh, where we help social enterprises, social entrepreneurs and businesses to design, build and fund their social ventures, maximizing their revenue while impacting the community that they serve. So let's get started and jump right into it. So like I said, we're talking about how to start your social enterprises and I have 12 quick steps for you to get the ball rolling mentally as to what you're going to need to do. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is to understand the feel. You need to understand the feel of social enterprise and social entrepreneurship. It is not a new feel, but it's new to a lot of people. So taking a class um, and getting some knowledge about what a social enterprise is, what social entrepreneurship is, and how it works, how you know the business aspect and the social cause aspect works together is going to be pivotal for your success because you cannot be successful at something that you don't understand. So understanding the feel of social enterprises and social entrepreneurship is going to be you're going to need to be your very first step. The next thing that you're going to want to do is do some industry research, whatever industry you are thinking about getting into, because remember, a social enterprise is a business, right? And businesses are in business to make money. So it's a for profit business. Unlike a nonprofit organization, this is a for profit business. So you're going to have the business aspect and you're going to have the social enterprise aspect or the social um, cause aspect of your business. So you need to research the industry in which you're going to be selling products and services. And you also need to research the industry in which you're going to be trying to champion a particular social cause. So whatever that social cause is, you need to know who the players are already in the ballpark, in the, in the field, just like you would need to know who those players are in, um, your business part of it. So you're doing competitive analysis in your business. And over here in the social cause aspect, you're looking to see what other organizations, whether they're social enterprises or nonprofit organizations that are trying to solve the problem that you are trying to solve as well. So you have double the homework to do, right? Um, get some advice, right? So if you don't know something, the best thing to do is to go to someone who does know it? Yes, it's all well to Google it, but remember someone who's an expert has already gathered all of the knowledge and can take that knowledge and condense it down into a form that's easily digestible for you and save you tons of hours from going out there and trying to figure it out on your own. So get some advice through a coach or a consultant or strategist so that you can get the ball moving faster in the right way. Because remember, it costs more to fix a problem um, that you messed up than it does to get it done right the first time around. Because you're championing two things, you got your business, which is your legacy, and you can make lots of money from, um, and then you have the social cause for the social aspect of it. You're going to need to network um, just like a nonprofit organization would. They need to get out there, get the word out, find people to support the organization, support the social cause aspect of your business. You're going to need to do that as a social enterprise or social entrepreneur as well. So you're going to need to get out there and dig into your network and find people who connect with your cause and are willing to support. So the next thing you're going to need to do is to clarify your offering, right? What are you going to offer for sale on the business portion of your, um, your venture, right? So what are you offering? What type of business services are you going to be offering? Products or service-based businesses, right? What are you going to be offering? Are you going to be offering a product that's for sale? So that means you need to figure out how you're going to source all of the stuff that you're going to need for that product. Or are you going to be offering a service-based business? 
is it going to be a service-based business and what are you going to be offering in this service-based business you also need to figure out what are you going to be offering on the cost aspect of it as well so does your cause directly relate to your business services what you're currently offering in your business does it align with what you're going to be offering over in the cost section of your business if it does not align you're going to have a little bit more work to do or you're really going to have to uh, make sure that you in that networking piece that you are gaining the partnerships that you're going to need so that you can work smarter and not harder and i mean if you keep listening to my videos as we go along you will get more and more details on how you can do this but remember it's kind of like you have two businesses in one so you're going to have to find a good marriage a good merging of these two businesses again so that you're not working harder but smarter and that everything is going to be done effectively because if your business the for-profit part of your business does not align with the cost portion of your business it doesn't have to but if it doesn't um it can pull you in two different directions and then you'll be stressed out so you want to make sure so the next thing you need to do is to clarify your mission what is your mission right that's the cost section and then you have your for-profit section i can't keep stop i can't stop saying that because that's literally how it works you're going to have your cost section and then you're going to have your for-profit your business section so what is the mission and again if your for-profit and your business um your cause aligns then the mission can be encompassing of both of them right what you do in the for-profit portion and what you're going to do in the cost portion of your social enterprise if they're different you may need to create two different missions so that you are attaching them to both of these entities that are actually one entity um the next thing that you're going to need to do is to choose a business model. And for some people, this is hard for them to do because there are some business models that are specific to social enterprises so that they're like employment models where you can have a business that let's say you make bread, right? You have a bakery. And one of the things that you can do in this business is to employ people who are in second chance programs. So people who have been released from prison who can't find employment otherwise, people who are homeless, who don't have a physical address to give a regular employee. And you can have a training program where you're teaching them to be waiters or sous chefs or anything that has to do with your business. You're giving them on the job training and in return, you're paying them to train. So that is actually changing their lives, right? So you will give them minimum wages and you would have them come in and you would do some type of training program. And along with that, you will have created partnerships with other organizations in your community to offer the services that you are unable to offer in your specific business, making that your social venture. So there are a lot of different models. There are education models, there are employment models, there are tons of models. And I'm gonna do a separate video just on the different business models that you can have as a social enterprise. The next thing that you're going to need to do is to figure out your finances. And no matter what business you're in, you're going to have to figure that out. Where are you going to get the money from? Every business needs money to get started in some form or fashion. You're going to have to leverage some funds. So do you, are you going to be putting in this money yourself? Are you going to do some type of fundraising? Are you going to get investors to invest in your business? how are you going to garner the funds that you need to get this business off the ground supporting not only the business portion but the cost portion of your social enterprise or social uh, your social entrepreneurship venture the next thing that you're going to need to do is to write your business plan and i have about eight videos sitting in this library on youtube on how to write a business plan or the different components of a business plan so i do suggest that you go and you watch them if i can i'll put a link 
in the upper, what is it, right hand corner if you're looking at the screen um, on where that playlist is so that you can go and look at it. But you're going to need a business plan because the business plan is your roadmap to success, right? This is how you're going to get from point A to point Z because this is a two entity in one type model, you really, really, really need, every business needs it, but this business truly needs a business plan in order to be successful because you need to understand how they work together, how they intersect financially and service-based or program-based. You have got to sit down and think it through, plan it out. Either you're gonna do it yourself or you're gonna hire someone to do it, but either way, it needs to be done. If you don't do the business plan, you're literally setting up yourself for failure. After you've done the business plan, you've figured out your um, business model, your financials, now you're going to need to legalize it. That means you're gonna to have to choose the entity in which you're going to form. And I am actually going to do another video on the different types of entities that a social enterprise or social entrepreneur can form under. But just to let you know, you can form as an LLC, you can form as a nonprofit or L3C or a benefit corp or an S corp, or sometimes even a C corp. But there are different legal structures that you can use to formalize your social enterprise venture. The next thing that you're going to need to do is to promote it. Just like every other business, people need to know what you do and what you offer or else they can't, right? They can't support it. So if I don't know what you do and what you offer, I cannot support what you're doing. So you're going to have to get out there and make a lot of noise around your brand and around your mission so that people know to come and buy the products and services that you you. Um, you offer and how your products and services are going to impact the social causes that you have within your business. Okay. So there are a lot of different ways to do that. I can't give you all of it in this video, but I will definitely give it to you in another video. So just make sure you're clicking that like share and subscribe button so that you know when I'm uploading videos and these videos will be uploaded every Monday because it's impact Monday, right? So they'll be uploaded every Monday so that you can gain some knowledge and understanding of the social enterprise and social entrepreneurship realm or industry so that you can make informed decisions about what you should do. Um, the next thing or the last thing that you, so these are 12 tips, right? So the last thing that you're going to do is to show your impact, not the impact from your business per se, unless you're talking about your business, but the impact that you're making on the social portion of your business. So how is what you're doing positively affecting the community? You want to share those impact stories. Take people through the transformation that your social enterprise or you as a social entrepreneur have been making in the community. When you're looking for contributions, people will be more, um, they will be more, what am I trying to say? They'll be more adept to uh, helping you out because they understand what you do. They see what the transformation in the people that you're helping that means that they know that when they put their money behind your social venture, that it is going to go to a good cause. And you are able to, or you are free spirited enough to share, transparent enough, that's what I want to say. You're transparent enough to share what is actually going on in your social venture. You're not trying to hide anything. Once you're trying to hide stuff from people, people are not going to want to support. But when you're transparent, people are going to be able or going to be more willing to um, support your social venture. So make sure that you're showing the social impact on your website and on your social media platforms at all times. So those are the 12 steps to really starting a social enterprise. If you want to know more about social enterprise and social entrepreneurship, please reach out to me. Um, my Information is in the ticker below. It's TVA Consulting Group. It's www.tvacon.com. And we will be more than happy to help you to get your social enterprise or your social as um, entrepreneurship 
ventures off the ground if you're already a social enterprise so we can help you to grow and expand because we know the benchmark for a great social enterprise is being able to replicate what you have already done. So if you're not at the stage where you can replicate it anywhere in the United States, then you need our help. So reach out to us at, again, TVA Consulting Group. Information is in the ticker on the bottom. And thank you for joining me for another episode of Impact Monday. Again, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next Monday. Bye, everyone.